As a child, I was always fascinated by nature. And eventually, when I became a scientist, I was specifically interested in understanding how molecules, things we can't see, things at the very most micro level, translate into what we do see and experience at the macro level. The molecule that I think has had the most impact on the most lives and on the planet as a whole is water. So I spent a lot of my career innovating around water sustainability. Across all water innovations, and in fact across all technological advances that humans have made through the course of history, none has had more life-saving impact than the flush toilet. But 4.2 billion people on the planet, that is half the global population, lacks access to a safe, clean toilet. And the reason is because they largely live in places with no sewage plumbing. So they can't flush. In fact, non-sewered sanitation is such a huge problem that 18 to $30 billion per year gets spent on non-flush toilets. Now, I'm going to take a wild guess and bet that the majority of you have spent exactly zero amount of time thinking about toilets. But the lack of a safe, clean toilet traps people, billions of people, in a lifetime of perpetual poverty, poor health, and pollution. Safe sanitation actually underpins every aspect of how people and the planet survive and thrive. So how is it that a toilet has such an outsized impact? Well, before COVID, poor sanitation was the cause of 80% of all infectious disease spread and 4% of all deaths globally, including the death of one child every minute. Diarrheal disease, which is caused by poor sanitation, causes rampant stunting and malnutrition among children, robbing communities of their future. Safe toilet access empowers women. Females are disproportionately endangered when they lack access to a safe, clean toilet in or near their homes. So that forces them on a daily basis to have to go in public. And that means on a daily basis, they face the risk of being sexually assaulted. Safe toilet access promotes girls' education. Half the world's schools lack proper toilet facilities. That means for girls, every school day becomes a struggle to avoid the urge to go. They don't eat, they don't drink, they stay home for weeks at a time when they have their periods. By puberty, 20% or more of girls drop out of school altogether. And many communities, when they drop out of school, they're susceptible to being married off as teenagers, which puts them into a lifetime of subjugation and poverty. Keeping girls in school helps lift them, their families, and their communities as a whole to greater prosperity. Poor sanitation pollutes the environment. It poisons scarce water resources and propagates climate change. Unmanaged sewage contributes about 4% of man-made methane emissions, and methane is 25 times more harmful a greenhouse gas than carbon dioxide. So, with just this one intervention, a safe, clean toilet, we have the potential to impact nine out of the 17 UN Sustainable Development Goals. But if we're going to get safe sanitation to everybody, flushing cannot be the answer. On average, a single person will output about a soda bottle worth of waste every day, and flush toilets use half a bathtub's worth of clean water to get rid of it. That is insane. That's clearly unsustainable. But when flushing isn't an option, waste has nowhere to go, and things get messy real fast. So in non-flush situations, the only safe option is to collect that waste frequently, like garbage, which is hugely costly. So my team at Change Water Labs has come up with a way to get rid of waste that doesn't involve flushing or frequent collection. Instead, we shrink it inside the toilet itself. The key insight behind all of that is that human waste is 95% water. 
So why are we flushing water with more water? Why don't we just evaporate that water and make the waste vanish? The inspiration for evaporative sanitation came when I was doing some work for NASA looking at ways to recycle water on the space station. One of the ideas was to use what are called breathable materials that have the property of passively drawing out molecular water from a wet mass using moisture diffusion. We actually have seen moisture diffusion with a lot of familiar products like Tyvek housing wrap that modulates humidity in buildings and dry fit sportswear that wicks away sweat from your skin to keep you dry during a workout. So while I was doing my work for NASA, I was thinking, I get that space is the ultimate off-grid location, but there are plenty of off-grid locations that lack water infrastructure here on Earth. So as a scientist, how do I look to solve problems? Well, I look at what nature does. And nature, plants, have evolved into the masters of moving molecular water efficiently through a process called evapotranspiration. In soaking up sunlight, plants release molecular water at the leaves through pores that they have called stomata. This evaporation at the leaves then in turn drives absorption of water from the soil at the roots. So molecular water moves through plants largely driven by the humidity differential between the dry air above and the wet soil below. So taking the inspiration from nature and space, my team has developed the iThrone, a low cost, no flush, portable toilet that evaporates waste. The iThrone collects waste in bags made of a material that we call shrink wrap for crap. <laughs> These bags will quickly eliminate daily waste on site by soaking up and evaporating the water content converting it into pure, clean water vapor. The result of that is that the waste in the bags shrinks in volume by 90 to 95 percent. Just like transpiration in plants, this evaporation is driven by the humidity differences on either side of the membrane. Our material contains components that mimic the parts of a plant. There are the evaporative components, like the leaves. There are the absorptive components, like the roots. And then there's the vasculature, like the stalk, that helps transport the molecular water from the roots to the leaves. The other benefit of our waste drying technology is that by eliminating the water content quickly, the iThrone shuts off the bacteria that use water to convert the waste into methane. So unlike all other available toilet options, the iThrone uniquely takes the approach of making waste literally disappear. It gets rid of waste in a way that's clean, sustainable, low cost, and good for the planet. The iThrone has the capability of delivering safe sanitation to more people in more places at lower cost. It can be a compact, clean solution for crowded communities and urban slums. It can be a drop-in solution for emergencies and a water-conserving solution for dry conditions. The iThrone has the potential to clean up communities by making safe and sustainable sanitation much more accessible, deployable, and scalable. The key is by shrinking the waste fast on site, the iThrone has the ability to transform the economics of decentralized or distributed sanitation. Without all that water hookup infrastructure, the iThrone is five times cheaper to install than comparable toilets, which means it'll help increase toilet availability. Unlike other container-based toilets that need to be emptied every one to two days, the iThrone only needs to be emptied every one to two months. This has the impact of cutting collection costs drastically, at least in half, if not more. And believe it or not, Waste collection jobs are not desirable. You are not going to find lots of people trying to have these jobs. So one of the limitations on expanding safe sanitation to more people is that we don't have enough people to collect them. So one of the solutions has to be that we have to increase the efficiency of servicing. And the iThrone has the potential 
by making every waste collector have the ability to service 20 times more toilets. So we were able to conduct two successful field pilots in very challenging conditions. The first pilot we deployed right before COVID. We deployed the first units of the iThrone uh, for urban public use in Uganda. These toilets were sited on the site of the Chiboga District Hospital, the women's hospital, and near the girls' school. Prior to their installation, the women and girls in this area had to basically walk about 10 minutes to this kind of remote, sketchy area where they had to use unsafe, unsanitary pit latrines. After they were installed, the iThrones were able to serve 400 users per week with safer sanitation. They shrank collected volumes of waste by up to 10 times, which meant they only needed to be emptied every two to four weeks. Because they didn't allow any waste leaks or odor to be emitted on site, we could put them pretty central in this urban district, which meant they were closer to where people lived and worked, instead of having to be remote and distant. That made them safer for female users. Then, this last October, we deployed upgraded iThrone units for household deployment in an indigenous village in Panama. The families that are hosting these units prior to their installation, also had to rely on rudimentary pit latrines. In the first two months, these two iThrone units were able to eliminate collected waste volumes by 97%. They eliminated 350 kilograms, or about a third of a ton of human waste. They provided complete hygienic containment of the waste, and we were able to run them purely off of solar power. Our servicing target was that we would essentially service them once a month. These units could run two to three months before they needed to be emptied. Success of this pilot has the potential to lead to a project where we could expand iThrone deployments to 150,000 poor households across Panama within the next three to five years. So with its waste shrinking approach, the iThrone has the potential to deliver cross-cutting social and environmental impact. Just one eye throne has the potential to reduce disease exposure for a thousand people in an urban context. The eye throne will help keep women safer and help keep girls in school. Not only does the eye throne not use or pollute water, it actually converts waste back into clean water, and it has the potential to curb significant sanitation-derived carbon emissions. Expanding safe and sustainable sanitation is one of the most effective ways to improve the health and prosperity of billions of people. And my team at Change Water Labs is tackling the sanitation crisis and climate change one water molecule at a time.